Rwandan President Paul Kagame is on the verge of re-election for his fourth term in office. This, as preliminary results from Monday's presidential election show, he has gained 99.15% of the vote. President Kagame has ruled Rwanda since 2000. Viewers Nairobi Bureau Chief Maria Madialo is in Rwanda covering the election. Well, I think the results we had yesterday uh, has not changed as much. So uh, we know that he's won uh, over 99% of the vote, and I think he was 99.14%, but I think it changed to 99.15, uh, somewhere where I've seen uh, those results. And uh, sure enough, uh, the opposition was not even able to combine uh, to get the 1%, so between uh, the Democratic Green Party candidate and the more of the independent leading candidate, um, Paimana. So that's what the results are so far. But I think that number might change. Who knows uh, from what the chairwoman told us yesterday, that those were just uh, preliminary numbers and that we'll know more, you know, when they get final numbers, they'll share that with us. Even though they are still counting the results, uh, this margin of victory is almost the same as the 2017 vote. Has President Kagame spoken about the results in terms of uh, what this might mean for his own legacy in Rwandan politics? Yeah, I mean, I think yesterday, actually, as soon as uh, the preliminary results were announced, he, uh, you know, had started doing, uh, basically, it's not a, a victory speech, I should say an acceptance speech. I think he was watching with uh, other parties, he was watching with family, uh, colleagues, and uh, supporters and friends. So he spoke uh, a little bit, I think, from what I could understood, the little uh, Kenya Rwanda that I could understood and the translation from my cameraman. But all along, I think uh, President Kagame's uh, vision and what he's talked about has been, uh, you know, keeping what he's done the past 30 years, I'd say past 30 years, because he's uh, been there since, uh, you know, the 1994 genocide. Uh, A lot of people think of him as the savior. He's the one who uh, got them out of that. And after that, he occupied various positions, uh, obviously, before he finally uh, became president. And uh, he's been here for almost the whole generation. Um, He wants to keep, uh, at least for the people who support him and the people who kind of judge uh, his performance the past generation, uh, talk about the fact that he had brought stability, he had brought internal security, you know, the economy has developed. So President Kagame talks about that. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to continue moving forward. That's viewers Nairobi Bureau Chief Maria Madialo speaking with us from the Rwanda capital, Kigali, where she has been covering that country's presidential and parliamentary elections. Advocacy group Human Rights Watch called Tuesday for greater accountability of public funds in Kenya, framing it partially as a human rights issue. Kenyans have taken to the streets for four consecutive weeks to protest the high cost of living, corruption, and misuse of country's finances. What began as a tax protest has morphed into a demand for the end of President William Ruto's government, with demonstrators saying they do not trust it to solve the country's political and economic problems. Human Rights Watch called on the International Monetary Fund to work with the Kenyan government to ensure that IMF's support for the country is aligned with human rights and that corruption doesn't take funds meant to improve the lives of ordinary people. Alan Ingali, the African Advocacy Director at Human Rights Watch, said, Our greatest concern is that the outrage sparked by the proposed taxes is something that is endemic in Kenya in the sense that corporate tax evasion, for example, is one of the issues that haven't been taken into consideration. In addition to the opulent lifestyle that we have seen among the Kenyan executive. Kenya's debt pressures spurred the IMF to approve US dollar 941 million for the country in January, bringing the total amount loaned to the country by the financial agency to US dollar 3.9 billion. Kenyans have raised concerns about such heavy borrowing, saying it has done little to improve their lives. 
At the same time, protesters say citizens are paying more taxes so Kenya can repay the loans. The IMF urges that the money it provided to Kenya helped alleviate market concerns, allowing the country access to the bond market and partially rolling over a maturing euro bond. Ngali said that the Kenyan government needs to be accountable to the IMF and other foreign loan providers, but also for the revenue it collects in the country. Monies that have been allocated or are within the government expenditure should be for projects and processes of development in the country, Gali said. That, that's the reason why these loans have been sought. So accountability is that the public should be really aware of the extent of the borrowing. Activists have repeatedly asked the government to disclose the country's total current debt, especially the more amount owned to China, which the country has been reluctant to make public. Ruto has formed a task force to audit the country's debt and report back by the end of September. In the streets of many cities and towns, protesters continue to cry out about hard economic times and a government that they say has become blind and death to its problems.